We're here with Zach McCambly now, fresh off of a dynamite bullpen, because we're recording right on the uh, right on the right field line, and we got to watch a little bit of you throwing over there. It looked like you felt really good. You said you felt really good. Yeah. What were you working on in that pen? Dude, change-ups. Just working on straight getting through the ball, um, learning to adapt with the new ball, like treating my, my bullpens more game-like, because whenever I'm getting out there, I want to feel the same exact thing when I'm during practice, obviously you practice, you practice like you play. So um, just trying to focus in on keeping my focus, uh, being locked in there and um, just commanding all my pitches, really getting, getting all my pitches over the plate, making them competitive, not really worrying if they're like a strike or not. Yeah. Kind of just more worrying about like getting it in the box, getting it in the zone, whether that's breaking ball, obviously fastball command, but then with the changeup as well, like what I've learned, especially for, like from some of the guys is like, it doesn't have to be a strike every single time. It has to look like a strike, yeah. and that's the difference. Be yeah. competitive with all your pitches. I love talking to guys about their bullpens because a lot of guys approach their bullpens in very different ways from everybody else where, you know, you if you, you need that type of day where you're going at 60%, 70%, you just want to get the feel for something, you do so. Other guys are balls to the wall. I'm, I'm ripping it for 40 pitches here. Right. Does it change for you, bullpen to bullpen, what you want to do, what you want to focus on? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, I, I like to, I like to get off the mound as much as I can get off the slope. For me, I feel like playing catch isn't enough for me, yeah. um, especially a guy that spins the ball, a breaking ball type of guy. I like to feel the slope underneath me. Um, so like today I threw like 30 pitches, um, kind of like high intensity, I'd say more like game, like I would say. Um, but then on Tuesday, I'll, I'll probably get after like a 10 pitch bullpen. Nothing crazy, kind of more of like a touch and feel just getting like getting my mechanics set up and stuff because you know that's where you do your work as a pitcher yeah. um in my opinion I, I feel like growing i feel like growing up i didn't do that as much uh, i started doing it more in pro ball though like getting off because you don't have to worry about school and stuff anymore so now you literally <laughs> only <laughs> have to worry about being on that mount that's that's how i look at it and that's how i feel like i'm at my best when i'm getting off of it most of the time so obviously you've probably gotten better as a professional pitcher being in professional baseball where again you don't have to worry about that rinky day physics class that you got to walk to at 8 a.m on a tuesday um but i'm curious how you feel like you've transformed as a professional athlete because your checklist when you wake up for a day is probably all physical right it's i gotta lift i gotta you know run poles i gotta do something like that how have you transformed your body how have you transformed as an athlete Dude, it's been like a wild change, honestly, um, going from college to here. I love this more just because of when you're, let's be honest, a lot of student athletes, they want to go, they, they want to go to play the sport. They're not necessarily going to be a, a doctor or something, right? Which is totally fine. That's not the way I wanted to go. But for me, it was always baseball. So now that I finally get to do that every day, you know, I'm grateful for it. And it's awesome. You know, you get to come to this park. It's freaking beautiful every yes. single day. Um, but yeah, like just in turn, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that a lot of people don't necessarily get. Obviously, you two know what it's like. You guys know, you guys talk to a lot of guys, you know um, what we do throughout the week. You talk to Griff a lot. So, but it's a lot of stuff. You don't just go out there and throw every sixth day, fifth day. There's a lot of stuff that leads up to it. You know, your lifting schedule and your eating and everything. It's real. And learning how to be a professional now, especially at the double A level for from what I've been told and what I'm learning, it's all mental. It's not necessarily about like your physical abilities anymore. Obviously, you know, you have guys that throw hundred and stuff, but it's all a cat and mouse game in your mind. And that's what separates you and gets you to the big leagues is your, your mental, your mental strength. So something I, I noticed on the physical side is, is on the mound working a little bit quicker with your, with your windup uh, yeah. than before. Can you talk a little bit about that side of things and uh, you know, what you've been working on just mechanically uh, mostly looks the same, but some tweaks, I think going into this year. Yeah, uh, I like the up tempo. I like I like the pace. You know, there's times when I can get a little fast, and uh, my coaches tell me to slow down a little bit. So I've I've kind of tried to slow my windup down a little bit. Um, but for me, it's about being athletic out there. Me, I feel like I'm in my most athletic, and I'm not thinking about things when I'm moving at a pace that I want to move. So when I'm out there, I feel like I'm and I'm rolling. I feel like I'm unstoppable because my pace is just. Go, go, go. Like Schuster. That was last night. Schuster last night. Schuster. Oh he gosh. works even faster than me. And I know I work fast. And I like that. I like, I like he keeps the game going and it keeps it's less thinking in your head and it's just compete. Just go. We need a Schuster McCambly matchup for the first under one hour baseball game Dude. of all time. Dude, yeah. Like I said, I've I don't know Jared that that well at all, really. I played I played in the area code games with him, but I've always like respected what he's done and stuff. He's always had that that competitive edge out there, you know, when you don't throw 98, you got to have other stuff. You got to be able to compete. So 
I feel like we both do that pretty well. We were just talking about this before you walked over because, you know, pitchers get hurt more often than hitters, right? For the most part, you've stayed healthy throughout your professional career, and I feel like that is a big testament to how athletic you are on the mound, right? And athleticism, in turn, creates repeatability through right. mechanics, and repeatability means that you're gonna, you're not going to do anything out of whack and you're not going to get hurt here. So right. how much do you credit, like, your athleticism and your ability to be flexible and be consistent on the mound to staying healthy? Yeah, I think a little bit has to do with athleticism, but I also really think it has to do with all, like, the work that – I come in and put in every day, you know, you don't get, you don't just, you're not just naturally, well, some people are naturally flexible, but like I work on being flexible every day. I come in, I do the same routine every day. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I get after in the weight room when I'm, when I'm in there, I take everything really serious when I'm in the moment, I'm serious about what I'm doing when I'm just cutting up with the guys, different story, yeah. obviously, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like when you're in the moment and something, when you come to work every day, like it should be like, all right, you're clocking in, get all your stuff done. Um, and I think we do, as a team, we do a really good job of that. Everybody, everybody has their own awesome. routine that they do to get ready for the game. Um, and yeah, I really just think it, it just comes down to like how, you know, I take really good care of my arm with the arm care. I'm, I'm on it all the time. So um, I can't control injuries. So I'm just going to let my athleticism and, and, and trust in what I do every week uh, just lead, lead me forward. I want to stay on what you just said for a moment because, you know, obviously you're getting your stuff done. It's it's a work day, right? But when you don't really have stuff to do, I, I see you kind of hanging around and smiling a lot. It seems like you love being around the ballpark and being around teammates and just like soaking in baseball. Has the love of the game ever started to dissipate for you or have you always just loved baseball and loved being a baseball player? That's a great question. Wow. I love baseball just too much. I love it. It's, it's, it's just it's a great. It's, it's <laughs> too much. It's my life, man. Like I've never known anything else really. And, you know, getting to come here and get paid for it a little bit and, <laughs> and like to be around the guys, like I'm around talent, like serious talent right now, man. Like, yeah. I'm around Conine. I'm, I'm around Yuri Perez. Yuri Perez. Like, that's a young prodigy, man. Like, I'm around Dave Island, who has won two World Series rings with the Yankees. I I was a Yankees fan growing up. I He walked out in 09 to give Mariano Rivera the ball or whatever, man. Like, he – he. there's so much knowledge in that guy's head. And, and everyone around here, I'm just trying to soak up as much as I can because – you never know what you're, what's going to happen in your career when, when you get done playing. You, you know, it's good to make good connections, and it's good to – for me, that's what it is. I, it's, it's really good to make connections with people because it's always it – does, it, it doesn't hurt to be nice to people and just have a good time, man. Seriously. People so, can come here and suck the life out of it sometimes. Yeah, I, that's what happens. And it seems like this – I've talked to, with Griff about it. It seems like this group is, is a really fun group of guys that, that seems to get along really well. And, and I know Griff has said this is the most fun he's had on the field. Uh, so that's really cool to see as well. So you guys really enjoying yourself, you know, while playing and up until this little stretch where you guys had about like five days of not playing, you guys were, were red hot and in first yeah. place. So usually it goes hand in hand. Um, I want to get into your grips real quick and we'll have you like hold the ball up and see if we can probably zoom in uh, when we do the post-production. Yeah. But I want to get real quick before we get to that, Yuri Perez, you said young prodigy. And honestly, that's not even like, a, that's not even hyperbolic. He's what, six foot eight. Like six, seven. I live with him. He's my roommate. Okay. So like, did, did, they, the, did you guys have to adjust like the, the the door frames? And did he need a custom bed or something? Well, yeah, he still. I mean, he still sleeps on that <laughs> that that twin bed they gave us, which is crazy. But uh, which he hang his ankles yeah. hang off and stuff. But like, you should see like when we're in the kitchen together, like at the end of the day, like when we come home from the games, dude, like you can't help but just like stare up at him because we're like we're in the, we're all in the same kitchen, right? We're all we got like six guys in the place, so it's like. He takes up a lot of space, but he's awesome, dude. Like, what, dude's a freak. What makes him so good? Uh, you know, other than being six foot six, six seven, and, and being able to, to repeat his mechanics well, but like, what stands out to you as, as a pitcher appreciating, you know, another really talented pitcher? This is what I like about it. This is the perfect answer for that question. When he does, when things go bad for Yuri, and he's 19, he's 19 years old. When things go bad for him, he doesn't let it. It doesn't phase him, man. He could go out and give up five runs one week, and the next week, well, the next first of all, the next day be the same guy, which is really important in yeah. this game to be the same guy every day coming in here. But to also come back and be better the next start, like it doesn't matter. He he has it. He bounced back every time. He I has that too. He has the mentality, and he's and he he's basically a sophomore in college, man. He's <laughs> yeah. a sophomore in college. Could, could you imagine if he was in college? No, I, I can't. <laughs> like. 
I remember being a sophomore. Like, he's failing for the first – and he's not even failing. Let's put it that way. Yeah. He's not failing that much. But, like, he's seen some adversity for the first time in his career, like, in double-A baseball. That's just, like, a statement in itself. And right? still, like you said, bounce back, and he's still Dominated. one of the league leaders in strikeouts, swinging strike percentage, you name it. And it's and I get to watch that every day, man. I'm the, I'm the guy that, that charts him. I throw the days after him. So, I've charted him every game this year, every single game. And he, he's incredible. He's freaking incredible and a great kid. Yeah, seriously. It's awesome. Great kid, man. So you think realistically this guy could be one of the next best pitchers in the game? Dude, absolutely, bro. Yeah. Absolutely. I swear. I'm not just saying it because nah, he's my teammate. I know, I know. No, guys are me. Baseball players, when you get to this level, no one, no one's, you know, no one's blowing smoke anymore. Right. You know, it's right. it's you call a spade. You say he's talented or you leave it at that, you right. know, but no one's saying stuff like that. One thing I will say though, and again, I try not to be too hyperbolic with the prospect analysis as well. And I will say your breaking ball is one of the best in the minor leagues. And I'll, yeah. I'll, I will, I will say that I I, the one I sent you on Instagram when oh, we yeah. were, when we were on the uh, backfields, I got to see you throw a few and that, that I already knew it, but I, that solidified it for yeah. me. It was, I laughed out loud and I felt bad because I, I didn't want to be rude to the guy swinging and missing. It's quiet on the backfields, but after you <laughs> threw that, I, I couldn't help but laugh. Yeah. Can you show us real quick, you know, your grip on the breaking ball. And then I would love to see how you adjusted your grip on the change up and, and you know, what, what the feel is for you now. Yeah. You can kind of hold it up like George HW Bush. All I right, like that name. Right. Just cool. Um, so basically, you know, I have, you got, you got the two seams right here for a two seam. I pretty much lay my middle finger right on this seam. I want to hook this seam almost right here. And then I just put my thumb underneath across these two seams here, right there. And then I lay my pointer finger right next to that. And then I hold it just like this. It's almost like I've, I've, I've talked to guys and it's almost like a, a sinker pitch uh, for some guys. Like people hold their sinker like this. But for me, I'm, I'm, I'm holding it like this. My wrist is this way. And if I want more of a 12-6 action to it, I'll throw it like that. I'll get on top of it. Is there like a wrist pronation? Yeah, or? for me, for me. Everything is about the wrist. Really? Everything for me is about the wrist because you can manipulate your pitch. Yeah. If you hold, if you release the ball like this, it's going to sweep more. It's going to come more that way. If you release the ball like this, it's obviously going to be more 12-6. So when I'm out there, I throw two different breaking balls, dude. I've, I've been yeah. doing it for a while. I've been able to get good at, um, you know, manipula manipulating the pitches. Um, but, yeah, basically just a simple grip. The thumb is really important. Keeping it underneath, that's really important. And then just ripping it as hard as I can at guys' faces. <laughs> like literally ripping it at yes. guys' faces. Literally trying to rip it at people's faces, at people's mm -hmm. bodies, because that's when you're trusting it the most. Yeah. That's where – that's if I have a feeling of the ball where I can rip it at somebody's face and I can get it to come into the zone, I know that I have it for the whole day. I can throw it wherever I want. And it's all about your eye levels and what you're doing, obviously. So there's a lot of factors that come with it. And I know a lot of guys, when they're first learning a curveball, especially, but you hear it with a breaking ball, too. It's almost like that motion of turning a doorknob. Like, right. opening that doorknob, do you feel like you're starting to turn that and let it let it rip a little bit? Yeah. So, okay. so really, I'm just trying to just stay on top of it. For me, and also going back to the balls, yeah. it's about having a grip on the baseball. It's about being able to, for me, I keep it really deep in my hand, all my pitches. Um, I don't know why. I just have always held a ball like that. Like even my fastball, I hold my fastball, spread, fingers spread out and kind of like deep in my hand like that. So for me, if my, in order for my pitches to be effective, I want it, I want to feel like really snug in my hand almost. Um, without choking it, though, how do you? Without, it? without, well, no, almost choking it. Wow. Me and Max, me and Max Meyer, we talked about this a couple of times because I don't know if you've ever seen the way Max holds his fastball, no. but Max holds his fastball literally like chokes this, like chokes, out. yeah, like literally chokes. And talk about out. another slider that's yeah. top notch. Yeah, yeah, dude's ridiculous. We already know about Max, but right. yeah, so it's, it's just interesting to see how every pitcher is different because some, Yuri. Yuri will hold his fastball like his this. fingers are probably like – he could probably wrap his fingers yeah. around yeah. it. That's how, uh, that's how Tyler Glasnow would hold his fastball. It's like almost like you're holding it back, right? Yes. I, I feel like you, that's got to be so hard to, like, control for it's, some people. It's with guys with huge hands. Yeah, exactly. I'm the opposite. I don't have huge hands. I don't have long fingers. So, I'm more of a guy that has to keep the ball deep in my hand. I have to do it. As for change-up, kind of just simple – Keep it like this again with the seams. I'm trying to throw it off my ring finger. Jeez. I got my pinky on the seam here. Uh, the ring finger down there, right there. And when I'm thinking, honestly, from what I've been told now, I've been told that I try to guide it too much. Okay. So um, for me, it's just getting a feel for just throwing it like my fastball. Ripping it and trusting the grip. And also, again, going back to the wrist. 
if your wrist is like this when you're trying to throw a, a change up, oh, it's, it's not going to work, dude. Yeah. It's all the wrist. Every pitch is all the wrist, I swear. Come down on it. Make sure you're getting out on it. And, and then naturally at the end, you pronate regardless. And then naturally your your ring finger and your middle finger are going to be the last one you to touch. So that's the baseball. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Any other? That's that's all. I was most excited for the pitch for the pitches and the grips. Any final thoughts from you, Jack? You're the pitching guy over yeah, here. I mean, like you know, I guess my thoughts here, um, just to wrap. I'm thinking, what is the best thing for Zach and Tammy to look at? Because we talked about baseball being cyclical. We talked about pitching being cyclical. You know, we've got some guys where yes, it's like Dylan sees where you're spinning the crap out of the fastball and you have this tight breaking ball, but Trevor Valdez is also killing it. He's, you know, sinker curveball too. What is Zach McCandley's peak and what is Zach McCandley who's a couple of years into a major league career look like? Man, I I think I'm I'm just learning every day more how to be like a real pitcher. Yeah. Um, you know, I for me I've always been like a power pitcher almost, like a fastball breaking ball and you know, I was talking to my coordinator the other day, and he was like, once guys – I see guys a turn in their career, once guys learn to be less of a power pitcher and more of a pitcher. Like, you know, being able to – be able to sequence guys, being able to read hitters, what they're doing. I've never done that. Dude, I never even threw a changeup until I got to double A, <laughs> ever. Like, I never – didn't need to. I didn't throw a changeup really in high A. I didn't throw a changeup in college at all. Zero changeups in high school. I threw one changeup in high school, and I gave up a home run my Good. freshman year. Never again. Never again. Never, never, never won again. again. So yeah, it's just it just comes down to me. It's nothing about my physical abilities anymore. It's it's just tapping into to being mentally locked in and feeling like you're you're giving your all every single pitch. I want to feel like I got hit like a bus at the end of that my eye. That, that. That's that's and like the whole body too, right? Not just the upper body. The whole you body, feel like that, you know, waist down. Too. You want to feel ment. You your your brain needs to feel you know fried. <laughs> Uh, you know, your body needs to feel exhausted. That's how you know you gave your all. That's how I know, you know, if I'm going out there once a week, I want to, I want to, I want to feel that way. I want to be able to say I went out there and for my once a week and gave my team a chance to win. Right. But the best Zach McCamley version of myself yeah. is a guy who just fills up the zone and, you know, gets after guys with high tempo. Sounds that, like a good pitcher. Yeah. yeah dude, sounds like that, a really good one. That's, that's, that's what I'm doing, man. And, and it looks like it over the last handful of starts, man. So yeah. thanks so much for the for the time and really looking forward to seeing you continue to develop on the mound, continue to shove and more of that change up. I'm yeah, excited man. to see more of that change up, man. I appreciate yes, you. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate you guys, man. Thank you.